Okay, good evening. Give you an opportunity to see my LX65 mounted with a 90 millimeter ETX on this side nearest me and an Orion 80 short tube on this other side with a set of bino viewers. And I don't know, we could attempt to see if we can get uh, any, well, I don't know. I guess it's gonna run a, uh, the light on here. But if I were to get lucky, I doubt it. But, yeah, well, just barely. There's the moon in there. <laughs> but uh, this was just showing uh, the use of this uh, for two telescopes. And this side can handle 14 pounds. This side can handle 7 pounds. And so a little Mac works really nice over here. This 80 millimeter short tube works good on this side. You can actually put up to a lightweight eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain for visual on this side uh, with the 14 pounds. I think the Mead version weighs just under 13 pounds. Um, for the LX65, they actually lightened it up versus their regular LX200. Um, OTA and this is built as a alt-as platform uh, you can set inside the controls here if we go out on the mode and out and out and out and then we'll go to utilities and enter I believe that's collect. Okay. And let's see. <laughs> Actually, I think I have a different. Yeah, okay. I see what's going on. I have the audio star on this, which I think was the wrong one. Let's see, there we go, enter, let's see, there we go, there we go. If you go into telescope here, hit enter, it says telescope model. Well, lo and behold, if you go down through here, you have all these different abilities but they're in telescope model hit enter that's LX65 but you can change that because in this see because you have different optical tubes it kind of needs to know which optical tube you're using Okay, so you can do 6-inch Mac, ACF, 8-inch, but there you can do the ETX-90, the 105, the 125. You can do the LX-98, 10, 12, the LXD-55, Alt-As, and essentially all that is built into these uh, Auto Star 2 Audio Star setups. And see, that's going through the LX65. But if you actually put it on the LX90 8 and hit Enter. Then you can actually use this as a LX90. But anyways, I'm just showing you 
and it's going to bring it down and it's setting it up according to the LX90 routine. But I can get out of that. And if we turn it off and turn it back on, it should go in and let's see let us see here mode da -da -da -da. i'm gonna see if it lets me do this no okay we'll go back out And now, see, we, let's go enter, enter, and say we're on LX90. So now, go back out to mode, and let's go. Da -da -da. And here in the mount, we can change it to polar. And that's what I wanted to get to. So now, if you have this mount on a wedge, you can actually do a polar alignment with this. And then you'd be able to do some astrophotography, a little longer astrophotography. Now, this isn't built, I don't believe, as robust as an LX90 as far as the drive system, but for short length refractors, the 250 millimeters, the 400 millimeters, that would be more than adequate, I believe. And having the ability to mount two telescopes at the same time, you can imagine the kind of um, imaging you could do at two different focal lengths or two different cameras, um, eyepiece projection versus prime. Um, it just opens up a lot of options there. But I'm going to go ahead and reset this. And get back out here. Enter. And we will go back to the LX65. And on this one, I'm just doing the 5 inch Mac, which is close enough considering how these are set up. And then click enter. And we can just go on out, and I'm going to shut this off. Anyways, just to give you an idea of what's capable on these little LX65s. Um, I'm running a nice big battery booster here. This is a commercial grade. And you can run it off of a set of batteries from this drawer right here. If I open it correctly, there we go. And you can see you can put eight C batteries in there. And those will last a while. Um, but if you're going to use it any amount of time, you really don't want to go um, to that route. Okay, well anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it.